Um, we are going to start this morning with Marsha Donahue, who is a visual artist from Villanopit. Marsha is the owner and founder of North Lake Gallery. She has degrees in the fine arts from American University and the Maine College of Art, and cites as inspirations Winslow Homer and John Singer. Sergeant, please give Marsha a warm welcome. I've performed for a long time as a singer, and I don't have any uh, stage fright, but when it comes to talking about your own work, that's a different thing. Yeah. I grew up a Unitarian, whoops, we flipped to the second slide. I grew up a Unitarian Universalist minister's daughter in central Maine, and so nature was very important to me, and summer jobs were always in the mill. Uh, but having been around sanctuaries all of my childhood with all that beautiful colored filtered light, soaring pipe organs and all edi large edifices, I think that when I stumbled on Bethlehem Steel in Baltimore, um, I was really just uh, completely uh, taken aback. Um, the creative process for me has always been about trying to find something that really means something to me what, and what I want to say combined with finding a technique that would really match that and bring that out with the most power. Uh, I used to take watercolors to the Adirondacks and this slide shows where I tried to blend the transparency of watercolor with oil paint, which was just kind of a, a, something that I tried once. This was a clarion of things to come. And uh, uh, eventually I moved back to Maine from Washington, D.C. with a child because I wanted to bring him up here. And I stumbled on the idea of dumps because that's important to all of us growing up in Maine. We all know what that means. But it, was, it had something to do with the uh, disposability ethic in our society as well. So these paintings were meant to really put it in your face, uh, you know, just how we feel about our, our culture and uh, how we take care of ourselves. And I was really charging along with a, a really solid um, move forward and really strong ideas and I had the technique and all of a sudden I had a studio fire in 1993 and it wiped out absolutely everything. I had no place to work, no supplies. And so this watercolor technique uh, that I had uh, developed just in an amateur sense during my uh, uh, time uh, in the summers, I decided that I would teach myself watercolor. So between that industrial slide and these watercolors was a lapse of about 20 years where I learned that technique and I got interested in the transparency of color and uh, using color in a different way than layering it on with oil paint, which was a much more structured process. The um, uh, watercolors are really are very fluid and they really um, you know, you have, you're kind of in a sea of water and, and putting wa uh, color into that. But it gives you a kind of a, a searing, clear light. Well, then I went up to the Katahdin region. We moved up there about uh, 14 years ago. And I felt like I had come back home. There was really a sense of, of muscle memory or cell memory or whatever that is about where I was, and I began to react emotionally to the landscape. This one in particular showing kind of a, uh, you know, a depressed mill town, and uh, I actually put a layer of gray over that whole thing to kind of quiet it down. And, but still, I was interested in the power of the landscape. Um, and there were so many examples of that around me that it, it just brought back that whole sense of uh, nature and and powerful color, uh, which to a Unitarian Universalist is, is, is God. Uh, so then I, I realized that I really missed oil paint after all this time, and I don't know where 23 years went, but suddenly I wanted to go back to the medium that I understood and wanted to develop that. And of course, once I really started with, with that vivid color, I was just all amped up again. But then, of course, I didn't want to lose my watercolor technique. So here's the struggle. You're going back and forth. And then I began to try to find subjects that were appropriate to one or the other. And then I said, no. The idea with the creative process is you assimilate, you assimilate things, and you accumulate technique, and you accumulate ideas. And you never really leave anything behind. 
they, they, they all become part of the same process. And so that's where, I, where I've ended up is with, with, you know, I do two or three watercolor studies to really understand the subject that I'm looking at and uh, to kind of feel it out. And, and the watercolor is not really the finished product at that point. This is a, a really clear example of just feeling my way around. And if it's not a finished product, then I can really uh, have the freedom to do what I call painting without a net. Uh, you don't have to worry about whether you can rescue it or it's gonna be successful. Then I take that to the finished product. Come on, finished product. Any minute, there it is. Uh, and really uh, use the technique that is common to uh, oil painting, the structure, and pull it together uh, and really clean it up. Um, so this is the process now going forward. Um, when I was about 21, I walked into a, an exhibit at the Phillips Collection in Washington of uh, Cezanne's watercolors, and I went away. I think along with the fire, that was the, a major moment in my, in my uh, young life, uh, and I never have left uh, that behind, that, uh, you know, that the color didn't necessarily match the lines, that he was painting without a net, and that it had this incredible clarity. Um, and so that's the, the, the thing that I keep going back to is that the one uh, basis from w the springboard from which I jump off into my leap of faith that I, can, that I can actually represent what it is that I feel in here, this sense of home that I have, is what I learned from Cezanne 21 years ago. I never left that behind. And when we eventually get to the last slide, you'll see just the drawing on a canvas. And what Cezanne always said was that you should know the whole image uh, within a few lines. You should know everything that's gonna be on there. And it so stunned me when I finally saw this uh, canvas that I had sketched that it looked just like a Cezanne drawing to me and that I could go back after all this time and still rely on the things that I've learned all along the way because those are what you carry with you in your kit bag. You don't ever uh, really walk away from those. Uh, and there it is. So I look at that and I see, I've already done many watercolor sketches, but I see the whole thing already. I see all of the color. I see everything I need to see in that. And I think um, you know, that's what it's like when you come home to your, to your technique and you come home to your place in this world.